Oh, well, cheers, mate. Cheers, Steve. Nice night, sir. Good to Pleasure. finally catch up. Likewise. See what you reckon about this. Yeah, too easy to drink. <laughs> so that's, yeah. Now, you and I have been mates on Facebook for, for ages, but we finally caught up. Yeah. And I wanted to ask you, how did you get started in fishing? What are your earliest memories of fishing? Mate, I would have been four years old. My grandmother and dad, and they had me down on Pier 2 at Hickson Road when it was still a working waterfront. All the old black fishermen, a six foot Butterworth spin rod. And they hot a grass off, and I, that's when I caught my first blackfish. From what dad told me, it went about two pounds. So, blackfish from an early, early time, they were pretty important in your fishing life. Yeah, well, my grandfather fished from during the Depression, mm. kept the family alive. Mm. And he fished from well up into his late 70s. And Dad, from probably when he was old enough to hold a rod, got introduced to it. My cousin Lenny, he got introduced because his father, Graham, um, my grandfather's brother, the whole family. They talked about family surviving on blackfish. And if you knew a blackfish when during the Depression, you were lucky. Yeah. Because it was one of those fish that were, they were always about year round. Centipede and reels, long, soft rods, float. It is an addiction. It's like any other form of fishing. Yeah. But it's, it's, something unique about it. I was going to ask you that, what is it about, you know, what, what captures your uh, passion about blackfish? Is it the way you fish them? Is it the gear? Is it the environments they live in? I suppose when I started out, it was more specialised than what it is now. Uh, your specialist rods made up in tackle stores, you know, in the Sydney CBD, but you had Pitt Street Sports, Town Hall Sports, and the complete angle, they're the only one left. Mm. Uh, Nivens down in Campbell yeah, Street. Yeah, yeah, I used to go to Nivens. It was like a a cave in there sometimes. You know, you'd go, they'd, they'd have piles of blanks leaning up against the wall yeah. and just stuff everywhere. And the green weed had just been delivered and you could smell it and everything. But then you had, um, I can barely remember Weiss mm. being on Broadway before That's he right. moved up on the Parramatta Road. And really, yeah, the, the marlin with the fire fishermen still there next to the Broadway Hotel. And everyone goes, what was that? That was Weiss Tackle. Yeah, what was steel light, or, you know, if you didn't have the money for an Avon Royal. Mm. Some stores sold the Trudex, you know, but they were even more expensive still. And I suppose all the gear I got was passed down to me. You get the hand-me-downs, but it was still good gear. And I suppose I liken it to fly fishing in a sense because... You see guys that can actually cast straight off a centre pin and get that long flowing swing and mm, deliver mm. the flow as opposed to some of the spin reel, there's an art to it. Yeah. It's the same with fly casting, there's an art. An old black boy has said, you know, an exceptional fly fisherman will make a good black fisherman. And, and vice versa too, yeah, I think. I found that with myself. You know, I, I'm not the world's best fly fisherman. You know, I can cast a good line. I don't catch as many fish as some, but... Mm. And, you know, you can get into making things for it yourself too. So you can tie your own flies for fly fishing. You can make your own blackfish floats. Have, yeah. you, have you been down the blackfish float line? Do you make your own? Yeah, I make my own floats. There's a couple of guys starting to get back now making blackfish floats for people. And they're a dedicated blackfish float where it disappeared for a long time. Yeah. And, mm was a guy that was a brony Allen Skelton. skeleton. Mm. Yeah, he was legendary. Yeah, yeah, yeah I had that, some of his floats. Yeah. Mm. If you've still, if you've, if people have still got them, they treasure them. I haven't got them, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Russian Joe, who fished Sydney Harbour yeah, for I've many, many years, mm. he made all his floats. Mm. My mind's got a lot of his floats that were left to him. You know, though, I think the one big difference is the amount of money that gets spent on the tackle between fly fishing and, and black fishing. And I yeah. always remember a tackle shop owner having a whinge to me years ago and said, if all anglers were black fishermen, we'd all go broke. Cause he said, they've still, they've got the rod and reel that their father passed down to them. That was probably passed down to him from, from the grandfather. Yeah. They, they change line, you know, they re-spool with line about every four years. They build their own floats. And he said, they come in once a year and buy a packet of number eight snack hooks and that's it. That's the only thing. Or a, maybe a spool of torch or something for their, for their leaders and they just do not spend money. But what you were saying about surviving on blackfish, that's so true. And, and mm. you could still do it. You could, you could literally live on, on blackfish, I reckon. You could catch enough. They're, yeah. they're prolific, aren't they? I say to people, because I you know, give a lot of people a lot of fish that mm. are worse off than you or I. Mm. 
and helps them through. Yeah. Um, you know, put some meat in the table. Yeah. But I've still got Dad's Sport X66 through that was built in 65 at Chapman's at wow. Rockdale. Yeah. It was built by Gary Chapman himself. Yeah. And I've still got some of Dad's reels. But it's, it's so true. Spool of wine, you might buy a spool of wine once a year. Mm. Box of hooks once every six months. There's that roll of damp course that, you know, your old man's knocked off from a mate that's in the building trailer that's been demolishing your house, and that's your sheep leg. That's your sheep leg, yeah. yeah, exactly, yeah. And, and, well, you go around New Year's Day, Sydney Harvest, scooting up champagne corks to make floats. <laughs> I love it. The bait's free. Yep, exactly. Right it's, there under your feet. And yeah. look, it, to me, it's probably one of the more economical and also, to a point, environmentally friendly sports. Absolutely. Low fishing. impact. You're not yeah. really having an impact on the, on the environment, are you, if you're doing it well? But then you've managed to combine the two because, mm. like a lot of people, you've now got riding, well, for quite a few years, got into fly fishing for blowfish. Yeah. How, did, how did that start for you? So I just started looking around the harbour for spots where it was going to suit fly fishing with an indicator rig, split shot and a weed fly. Mm. Worked out the best type of dubbing to use, which was just a green ice dubbing. Yeah. That actually feels like green ribbon's wet. And sometimes you don't have to burly. Sometimes you've got to get a bit of burly and to get them tuned in. Once, so it's essentially, yeah, you've got that woolen indicator Essentially, it's fly fishing with yeah. a weed fly, and anyone can do it. Um, and it's surprisingly effective, isn't it? Oh, it is. I mean, I know a lot of the conventional go uh, gear guys now that use still use the, the floats and center pin reels, they'll have two droppers, and they'll put green weed on one and a, and a fly on the other mm. sometimes and catch as many fish on the fly. I was on one low roof in Sydney Harbour one morning, and the other boys were fishing over the mainland side of it. But there's, there's some days it's like that. Um, other days I won't look at a fly because mm. I still think to this day, no matter how much anyone claims to know about blackfish or blue drink, mm. you know, yeah. you'll never know because they'll do something different. And they, yeah. they're, they're always doing something different. But maybe that's part of the attraction too. It is. I mean, with any type of fishing, it's going away from blackfish. I mean, uh, I've seen yeah, kingfish. I've seen kingfish turn up in places. I've never seen them turn up in you know 20 years ago. But now they are, and there's all sorts of other fish that, and that's the that's the beauty of fishing. You're mm. always learning something new. Isn't that so true, mate? I'll drink to that. Cheers. Cheers. It's not a bad drop, is it? No. Quite nice.